Okay, let's get this out of the way. Obviously, what I hold to be the greatest manga of all time is due to my personal analysis and breakdown of this series as well as all of the other mangas that I have read. My number one does not have to be your number one. And the other thing I need to get out of the way is this video is more targeted for people who have considered getting into Berserk and have seen maybe some of my videos on the channel but aren't really sure exactly about getting into it. Plus, I just love talking about Berserk and this is mostly a Berserk channel so it is what it is. Uh, other than that, if you are new to the channel, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and turn on the bell notifications, that way you're notified when a new video pops up on some of your favorite anime, manga, or whatever content. And without further ado, cue the intro. So I've been going around, kind of talking about different animes and mangas uh, that I've seen and read, and kind of pointing out how much I really like them, as well as throwing around some criticisms and giving my overall thought on the series, and pointing out some things that might interest you about the series, and some criticisms that might not necessarily stop you from wanting getting into the series because you should get into whatever you want to get into, but just sort of kind of like a heads up, this is some of the bad things you might expect from said series. And so I thought it'd only be fair for me to kind of do this and do a shorter, more simplified version uh, of a manga review about Berserk. I think it's appropriate since I've been doing this with all of these other series, and well, today on March 8th happened something in my life that if it wasn't for this, I probably would have never gotten into Berserk. So I don't know, it just all kind of feels like the right timing. And so I hold Berserk to be my number one, greatest manga of all time. I have it above One Piece, have it above Kingdom, have it above Monster, have it above Vagabond, have it above Villain Saga, Hunter Hunter, all of these things that are super phenomenal in that S tier quality, but I just have them below Berserk. Now, I'm gonna say this because I feel like in order to bring peace amongst everybody, when it comes to the upper tiers of manga and you reach that upper echelon, there's not really much denying the quality and the overall depth and just amazingness of these series unless you just haven't read it and you're just gonna call it trash because you have nothing else to do. But Berserk has touched a chord with me in every single way and it kind of nails the head on all of the things that I kind of prefer about a story and things that I think are necessary for a well-written story. But I digress. Regardless of how great I think Berserk is, Berserk isn't for everybody. Berserk tackles a lot of themes many times that most people aren't really familiar with, and said themes I'm referring to is at times the Nietzsche philosophy within Berserk, as well as the concept and philosophy of existentialism. Now, despite them not being concepts that I really do hold any belief to in real life, I do find it very, very impressive that an author is able to implement them so flawlessly within a series. And I also feel like this needs to be said because it's a common misconception that I think people have about us who praise Berserk, but Berserk isn't great for it having a dark theme. There are many mangas that tackle dark themes, such as slavery, rape, death, betrayal, you get the point. But it's not necessarily just having those themes within your story, it's how you go about it and how you implement them into your story. However, I will admit, especially early on in the Black Swordsman arc, besides other than setting the tone within the world of Berserk, at times it can come off a little too much. I, I, personally, I would prefer such graphic things to be more implied instead of shown, but it gets the message across. If you're somebody who can't stomach this, this is going to be an extremely dark world that Guts has to go through, so you should probably step away. But if you're not bothered by such things, then Berserk is a phenomenal journey. I think the first major praise that I really do need to give to Berserk is its consistent, amazing artwork. And the artwork just gets better and better over time. Now, in the most recent arc, the artwork style has changed due to the whole digital drawing aspect, and so a lot of Berserk fans do prefer the Conviction arc and early Millennium Falcon art style and all of that, but the artwork in Berserk is rare. There's not many, many things that are up there. Only Vagabond, Gantz, Villain Saga also has phenomenal artwork, but on a consistent basis, Berserk's artwork is phenomenal. I think another praise that I have to give to Berserk is that it really does have really good world building, especially in the later arcs in the Millennium Falcon arc and in the Fantasia arc where we get to see the different aspects and how the world has changed now within Berserk. However, I won't say its world building is better than One Piece because world building is kind of One Piece's thing. And something else I will give some of the other animes and mangas that I have reviewed is that because of uh, the style, I would say, they have a more diverse cast, being that because of certain events that take place within Berserk's world, some of what would be considered the main cast for a while kind of isn't there later on. I'm sorry, I really didn't know how to explain that without spoiling it, but essentially they fulfill their role and they do a great job. Characters such as Judo, Pippin, Rickert. And then now we have Serpico, who's kind of suffered a little bit of stagnation over time. And then you have Farnese, who's one of the best developed characters in the entire series. 
Sherka, who's like a fan favorite, Puck, the normal kind of relief, and Isidro, who uh, could be better. However, there are other mangas out there that have a more diverse and colorful cast. Also, one of the biggest strengths of Berserk is that at times, if you're somebody who enjoys the whole kingdom royalty style with some of the political talk, Berserk does have that, but it never really gets boring. The pacing is really, really good within Berserk, uh, especially early on. Now the pacing is kind of being ruined with hiatus, which is probably the only big complaint about Berserk that I would have, or well, that anybody would have, and it's of course hiatus. However, I think we are getting a new chapter this summer. Also, Berserk, despite it having 360 chapters, still has a ton of mysteries and intrigue to the series that always leaves you wondering, speculating, you reread it a lot, and then you're still coming up with new ideas as to what could be the backstory of these characters. And so it's one of those things that have a lot of reread value to it. It's not one of those mangas that I've picked up and I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm probably not going to reread it again. But before I get into the two main driving forces, as well as Casca, the third most important character in the series, I really do want to point this out. And that's most of the other mangas that I have read. And that is other mangas do have really good arcs, but they always have that one legendary standout arc. Like it might have other arcs that are super good and that are high quality but it usually just has the one legendary standout one that everybody pretty much agrees is near perfect yeah berserk has two and they're back to back and it really just boils down to preference when it comes to these two arcs for berserk fans you know exactly what i'm talking about the golden age arc and the conviction arc I'm not going to spoil it for anybody who's read it but berserk fans know what it is but now i get into the three most important characters of the series casca guts and griffith first i want to get rid of casca because even though she is a great character one of the best written female characters out there she isn't the main protagonist or the main antagonist of the series which is guts and griffith respectively casca adds so much of a diverse to Berserk, especially in the Golden Age arc, that her character importance cannot be understated. Uh, again, she's kind of the main driving force for Guts's character in the majority of Berserk, but the themes tackled within her character, such as her womanhood, is done phenomenally. Her romance story with Guts is one of the best written I've ever seen, and it's something odd to- you would never associate a romance with Berserk. But uh, real quick, another compliment to Berserk is that it's able to have literally everything within its story and in fact everything within one arc being the golden age arc but without me really spoiling the whole development and growth of her character which again is really good uh, if you get into berserk she will come off as annoying at first but she will slowly turn into one of the best waifus you have ever read honestly Ka Casca's bay well before the eclipse that is but uh We'll just assume some of you that are watching that video don't know what it is, and uh, that will be a very unpleasant slash pleasant surprise for you. And so before I get into the main protagonist of the series, uh, who I hold to be the best protagonist of all time, my favorite protagonist, it, it really doesn't come close for me. I want to get into one of the, if not also, the best antagonist I've ever read, and that is Griffith. Griffith is, how do I put this, extremely controversial within the Berserk fan base. Um, but the fact that his character has so much controversy plays into one of Berserk's biggest strengths, and it's not really a tell-you manga, it's a show-you manga. And so it gives you a lot of room to kind of analyze and take away different things from a character, which is why I've had at least like four different analysis on him alone. Griffith's transition from his character when you first meet him till now is absolutely insane. He's somebody who feels extremely real and just feels extremely human. There isn't anything about Griffith's personality that comes off as completely unrealistic or just rushed when it comes to his transition as a character, his development, his growth, the way he's presented physically as well as his personality, the way he treats people who are on his side as well as sometimes the red flags you get early on, along with the way he treats people who aren't on his side, and then what he ends up committing during the eclipse and the way he continues on as a character afterwards after he's become Femto. This man is on a tier with very few other antagonists. Up to this point, the only antagonist I would really put up in that tier would have to be Johan from Monster. And I also throw Meruem up in that echelon, although slightly below. And I think the craziest aspect about Griffith that goes for the same from Johan and Monster is how his influence and his character affects everything. Everything within the world of Berserk is affected by Griffith. All of the other antagonists, the main protagonist, Every character is influenced and affected by Griffith and his actions. For them to quite literally have, it seems, control over everybody else in that world, and, and not exactly direct control, but for him to have his fingerprints all over the place, really just adds to the feel of danger and, and constant threat within that world or story. But I think I've honestly said enough about Griffith. Now we get into the main 
protagonist of this story. My opinion, one of the, no, the best written protagonist that I've encountered so far, and that's of course Guts. Other mangas have better world building than Berserk, have a more diverse cast, but out of everything I've read, almost nothing, and I mean nothing, comes close to the character depth, not only given to Griffith, but given to its main protagonist, Guts. Oftentimes, some of the complaints that I do have about other series is the fact that despite their protagonists being good characters, great characters for that series, they often fall short compared to some of the side characters. But when it comes to Guts, this man can carry almost any series he would be in. Guts is a true underdog in the world that he lives in. He's somebody who suffers in every single form imaginable, spiritually, mentally, physically, even sexually. But instead of being constantly this super dark, quote-unquote edgy, if you will, killing machine, the most beautiful aspect of Guts' character, and one of the main themes of Berserk that I think some people don't understand, is how he overcomes that. The man's an absolute chad, an absolute stud, but he's also one of the most human, if not the most human, and one of the most relatable characters ever. Now, of course, when it comes to fiction, period, you won't always be able to relate to the specifics of the situation that happened, but you definitely relate to the concepts. Guts, like many other protagonists, embarks on this quest that, when you look at it at times, is extremely selfish. It's about what he wants to accomplish, what he wants to do, Screw everybody else, I'm gonna accomplish this, no one's getting in my way. But of course he does this with this anti-hero-like fashion. However, one of the best aspects of Guts' character as well is how he's not always focused on his own individual quest. In fact, one of the biggest themes early on about Guts' character that really adds to the human feel of him is the fact that he questions his purpose and existence in the world that he lives in. I heard a lot in the comments of the One Piece video, a lot of people said when it came to Luffy's character is that it's not about how the world changes Luffy, it's about how Luffy changes the world. And I said this in another video, but if I were to say this about Guts, I would definitely say Guts is somebody who's trying to survive in a world that he cannot change and that he's trying to find his purpose in, without allowing it to destroy him or the one he holds dear to him. And another great thing about Guts is that even though he gets stronger to face some of the other opponents he has, unlike other protagonists, the boost he's given doesn't ruin the narrative of his character or add plot holes, and that would have to be with the Berserker armor. I love the Berserker armor and I often praise it for being really the personification of one's inner darkness. It's one of the coolest and best power-ups in all the fiction, although the side effects aren't exactly pleasant for Guts. And so on top of all of that, some of the other minor things that, that there are also other really good standout characters like the Skull Knight, Zod, uh, Ganishka is a really good villain, Rosine is a great villain, Grumbeld is cool, and Berserk really does feel like a personal journey. It's been almost an entire year now that I've gotten into Berserk, and again, despite all of the other things I've read, despite of what I've gone through, despite me rereading it literally over 10 times now over the course of a year, Berserk still stands, for me, as the greatest manga of all time. And again, I could care less what people have to say in the comments below. If you are of the appropriate age, this is the manga I would recommend to you. If hiatus isn't anything that bothers you, and you really need something you want to check out during quarantine, you will not regret checking this out. As always, this has been The Masked Man. Hope everyone has a blessed rest of the day, and peace.